victory of Fearless Draft has in store for us. Right, so we've already seen some different stuff. We have a Galio coming through for IG, and with the uh, ability to just fly forwards, if you get an engage here from Leona, from the cannon, that Galio, Kaiser, and Graves are going to overlay their damage, fly into the place so, so quickly. NIP need to be very, very aware that if their squishies are caught out of position, there is going to be a hell of a lot of follow-up. I love that Nani is just playing pure mitigation in the mid lane. He played the Renekton in the previous game to shut down the Yone, and now Rookie locks in his LeBlanc, and Nani's like, okay, I'm playing Galio. I'm playing for Spell Shield. I'm playing for CC Chain every time you come in. We'll see what Rookie can do to play around the inordinate amount of CC over on IG's composition. Yeah, it does really feel like. Um Nanny has understood the assignment <laughs> in a lot of different ways. IG largely understood the assignment, at least in game two. This time, they have themselves a very clear comp identity. On the other side, you do have some uh, powerful uh, moments for this Nidalee to go run into the enemy jungle. I am a little bit worried that it's not, again, the team fight bruiser for someone like Aki to play. The Nidalee is quite hard to play right now. Eyes on him for me to make sure that he can um, get a really powerful start to this game on the Nidalee. Let's see if he can get himself ahead. Nidalee versus Graves. It's the ultimate farming matchup. Kindred left crying in a corner in the meantime. But uh, we'll see which of these junglers can find their advantage in the early game. You've not been a fan of Aki on these AQ junglers. Let's see if he can redeem himself as we go into this third. And potentially, I was going to say potentially final. It definitely final. It is the final one. The one series. way or another is the last one. <laughs> My goodness, here we go. IG versus NIP. I feel like this should have been a 2 0 for NIP, but IG forcing us to game number three and showing that they are no slouch. So, ward's cleared to start us off here. Aki, the one to finish that one off, so no solo lane. Yeah. Experience advantage coming out from this one. IG, though, in the meantime, are also staggered. Ah, oh, Rookie saw him. Rookie spots Nady, and she jumps over the wall. Somehow, <laughs> Prox's so first strike okay. doesn't take any damage back. <laughs> Yeah, and that's going to be quite important, by the way. So, um, in terms of, in general, the first strike from Rookie, very important. He's going to have a free early lane versus the Galio. Needs to get ahead of him, though, before the Galio just stops caring about him at all. 3v3 in bot side oh around Red Buff, though. Hook goes in. Uh, Juo is not that tanky just yet. Even with Aftershock, he's forced to flash away. Ignite going to be used by Vampire. And in the meantime, Aki forced away from his camp. Great start here by IG, reading Aki in the early game. Yeah, and it's going to be drawn a very low amount of HP to start off lane as well. We've noticed that, I think particularly in game one, NIP's 2v2 absolutely monstered. Um, Arn, and particularly Vampire, I think struggled in game number one. And left Arn to kind of just let fend for himself. Game two, it felt the other way around. And Vampire, with the Cholesterol, was pulled out to safety many, many times, even into the late game. Game three, with draw having to pop the pot early. Maybe that'll affect the 2v2. Maybe that can impact very greatly on the game. Let's see. It's trading coming out from Nani, but unfortunately, even with that taunt, Rookie can still zip back and dodge away from the queue. You know, this Galio, definitely a pick that can try and mitigate LeBlanc to some extent, but the first few levels are still always going to be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, you're just basically getting freebie for the first strike. GLFS will be spotted towards those Krog takes. Still level one though on photo draws. They can't really fight. Can you realistically dive oh this? You have no flash on draw. They're level one. They're still level one. The Zenith Blade goes in onto Photic. He's stuck underneath the tower. Vampires tanked for too long though. And GLFS is like one HP. If draw can hit a hook, it maybe could have been something. He escapes one for one, but look at all of the minions that are going down. And while this is happening too, Aki's very happily farming through the enemy quadrant of the jungle. Chai oh, no. lands oh, in no. mid lane. Oh, rookie finds him. That's not mitigation. That's a massacre. We did say the Galio is not a good lane into the LeBlanc. Early levels, you have to survive. You are a punching bag for the LeBlanc hitting you over and over. And Nani, we said he kind of understood the assignment of trying to keep down Rookie. Well, assignment, uh, we're going to have to mark this one a little lower than the previous game. 
time and failed as far as I'm concerned. If you're getting solo killed at level four. Mission Sweet failed, in. get him next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there won't be a next time. This is game three. <laughs> Well, well, actually, no, it's there won't. It's a double round It's a double round robin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have look. to get used to that. Um, so, Jill Alvarez doesn't have level 3 for this. He's very close to it. But he can't quite get himself that extra stat, the extra ability. Maybe this would have made it a uh, quicker dive. I think Draw massively outplays this dive. Stops GLFS getting a clean follow-up on the dive. Fast alone under that tower at that point. After um, the enemy support kind of locks up the follow-up damage. And here's the solo kill in mid lane. Just ends up jumping forwards. Has the first strike up. Spots him coming through and then massively out predicts him. He was safe behind the minions for a little oh, bit, but he beautiful. was tanking up auto attacks. Predicts him through on that E, catches the mid flight. Like the way that he forces Nani's position and then punishes when the E is yep. used. Absolutely gorgeous from Rookie. Like, it's just beautiful to see. Like, that, that. I'm going to go back and watch this preview yeah. later. I can't <laughs> wait. It's a good thing. Again, the great thing about LeBlanc early against Galio is that. Early on, your auto attacks mid a lot versus Galio. He can't just stand there in the middle of his minion wave and say, ha ha, you can't hit a chain on me. You have to get away from the auto attacks too. Rookie takes up those incremental trades and makes them into something really backbreaking. Force him under tower yet again. And Kins Hindley using the first strike, getting the poke down. Nady losing farm to tower as well because Galio's really quite awful at farming minions under turret. Overall, lane domination from the LeBlanc. We've seen a lot of LeBlanc fans in the LPL because of this. Even dodges the CC yep. chain there as well. Rookie looking good today. Yeah, Nani I would mention it. He's playing his so, own but, skin so. for God's sake. This is his signature pick. This is the pick that he made his name on, that he won the world oh. championship on. Can you even see all, all in the bot side? Ignite blown. It's going to be so kills right now. Oh, flash for flash. Vampire trying to follow up for more, but he was baited in. Joel gets the CC. Look at the stacks of Rend built up by Photic here. Wave will be crashed and on. Could be dived. Uh, Rookies use the ult mid lane once again, punishing that E coming through. Nanny tried to do the quick E where you kind of E behind you to kind of like zip into them with a the back step. Diz hasn't worked out against Rookie though. Rookie has just been better fingers on the keyboard right now, continually poking him out, using the ability of LeBlanc to jump forwards under tower, damage them, and then jump out before tower aggro goes over. That's been massive from Rookie in the mid lane. And while all this is happening, you can even see the bot lane working out in that 2v2. IG at least get themselves some grubs on top side. IG getting something here, but it does feel like NIP. I mean, honestly, they're not that far ahead in terms of gold. And he has arrived on the top side. Actually, GLFS won't even be able to get the grubs. He gets one single grub, and Aki will finish off the rest. Despite the fact that his mid laner is resetting and his yeah. top laner is pushed in, he's still confident to challenge GLFS there. And looks like he will be able to grab two of those grubs for himself. That's a shame because um, you're at the point now where you can use the Galio to bully your way into the enemy jungle as the Graves. Um, it was Season 8 which really reminded me of this combo. It was the KT Rolster comp back then with Kha'Zix Galio. And many other teams have done similar since then with stuff like the Galio following up on a Graves or a Kindred that can just jump straight onto you. In fact, Milky Way and XZZ, two other players we see in the LPL nowadays, between FPX and RNG. Um, those guys have done a lot of duos for that too. GLFS needs to stop bullying his way forwards, knowing that the Galio and that the roaming Leona, the Kaiser when they hit level 6, can follow up quicker than an IP can. Feels like a lot of pressure on GLFS's shoulders, doesn't it? Yep. When the uh, the players that you're citing playing this style of comp are Milky Way. Uh, yeah, it does, does feel like a little bit of pressure. Sorry, Dirk <laughs> in his pocket already. I mean, I love that the observers are just focusing on this mid lane because Rookie is just being so permanently aggressive. He's almost 20 CS up and we're only seven and a half minutes in as Dwo could get caught here. Fotic just starts trading onto Han. And look at this, all in onto the enemy AD carry in the 2v3. He's managing to somehow turn this one around. Fotic so low on HP, but they can't finish the job. They lose out in the end and a double kill for Griffith. Oh, we did say that Griffith, we'll call him that when he's ahead of the game. He needed to start showing up and being accounted for. He has to follow up on his team. He needs to be the one calling the plays. Gets himself a thousand individual gold leap out of kills pretty much and gets himself ahead of the game. The next play he makes is going to have the opportunity on top of it. He's going to have Nani in his back pocket with that first ult of the game too. Maybe the Galio will be behind individually, but if he can help his jungler who's ahead, maybe that changes the equation. Wow. Oh, 
opportunity already picked up. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> he is uh, he is a monster right now as Drake is starting. I love that Juo and Votic try for oh, the yeah. 2v3. Like, fair play to him. You're not going to get out of this. You have a huge minion wave. You can buy some minion aggro. I think Votic jumps a little too close to Vampire. And the ult goes on to two of them as... Uh, Griffith manages to get the double splash on that one, double kill beyond that. But still, credit for Fox Control to try and dance out of them. It was a valiant effort. Not even the cleanse could deal with the amount of CC the vampire was bringing to the table and the extra damage Ooh. that gave. Okay, TLFS forced out by Chuo. In the meantime, Maki looking to snipe away a blue buff. Does not actually have his smite available here. Maybe Fotek has to rend this one. It's going to reset for the time being. And GLFS is moving in. He does have his smite available. Joel starts a fight onto Vampire here. Smokescreen is the most OP ability in the game in those kind of chokes. But NIP bustled their way hey. forward. They really want this. They have Galio. Vampire dives in. Galio flies down to save the day. Looking for a taunt as well. As the buff goes down, Joel low on HP. NIP might just be scattered here, but it's Galio that goes down. They can't quite finish the kills. Draw's walking away. No. Prey Seeker found by Arn. And just about a one for one, all things said and done. NIP, they do get that Galio. Huge cooldown in the early game. GLFS needs to be a little bit careful walking around here. He's going to go towards this. I think this will just be a backing yeah, away I mean, from Aki. Yeah, you don't want to jump no towards way that guy. He <laughs> could win that 1v1 right now. There's and no I, universe. Yeah, Nid Nidalee is an assassin. Not quite from that kind of. Uh, Gold deficit though in the jungle. I don't even think he's behind the pace of the game. I just think GLFS has managed to pull so far ahead of it. IG, um, they don't have the Galio ultimate for a long time now. That's what I was trying to say before things got weird around the Herald. Um, Galio ult is incredibly long cooldown. You need to use it effectively, and you can see that Nani behind individually, but can contribute to the team fights very effectively, even when behind individually in gold. Those cooldowns are going to be worth their weight in gold. They certainly will be. Gold is heavy. I did some uh, it is. It is. research yeah. on that on Twitter uh, not too long ago. <laughs> um, Rookie? Hang on, Rookie is about to face check in. This time the CC chain lands. Rookie forced to flash away. That's really important because every time that you walk into lane as Galio versus LeBlanc, you know that you need to have actual kill threat on LeBlanc to be able to lane a lot of the time. Because if she gets a poke trade on you and she's high HP, things go badly. Now with Rookie out of the equation, IG should be able to get themselves an evening up of the Grub Scorp, not giving 4-0 to NIP, and it should also give a reprieve to Nani as well from the LeBlanc lane. Okay, some small wins coming out from IG. And to be honest, these small, small wins are starting to add up to bigger wins as Shanji looks for the all-out here. Zwien, forced to flash over the wall, doesn't even respond with the slicing Maelstrom, just opts out. Uh, there could be a LeBlanc. Well, it's going to be a Nidalee around the corner. He has to pull oh, the ult. wait a second. Look at the health from Aki. Almost gets one shot by Zwien. Oh, and he has the first strike on that too. So he even farms the Nidalee for a bit of gold. And that's going to be Aki swinging a miss. Honestly, Aki's barely impacted this game so far. He's been farming up okay, but not impacting these lanes again. I don't want to dunk on the guy too much, but I just feel like when he's on stuff like the Vi or any of these AD skirmishes, he has more impact in the game. Struggling to have that on the Nidalee right now. Oh, Dwo's been caught as well. IG are in there. Element. Oh no, he autos the ward. He had to use his collateral <laughs> damage. They are in their element today. They are feeling it in this last game. Okay. And I'm excited for it potentially as a dive going to come down this time. The spear lands, and this time it is an easy cleanup for the side of NIP. Uh, Tsuyan just does and spot out the, uh, the spear coming out of Fog of War. Doesn't have the reaction check for that one. The catch up rookie! They do, and he doesn't have flash available this time. Remember, dashes back underneath the tower. There are no minions. Rookie can hold off this next wave. Nani is going to tank the tower. That's dicey against Rookie's LeBlanc, but honestly, they just don't have a way. But Rookie has no way to get out of this one. Now will be CC'd and will be taken <laughs> down. Or oh, will he? The chain. Oh, he zips back as well. Rookie is dancing on him. There's three people here with the shotgun. <laughs> Finally finishes the job. Oh, the smoke and mirrors ain't quite enough to see him off to safety. Rookie on his skin, on a champion he's done so much work on. Can't make it out in the 1v3. IG eventually shut him down up in that top lane. Importantly so, Rookie, if he gets extended 1v1 laning phase, it's going to be such a pain in the ass for IG. He managed to take him off for that one and get Nani closer to the point where he can hopefully get enough magic resist to shrug off some of that damage. That was... Uh... 
that was a sequence of play. My goodness, <laughs> Rookie is trying to style on him, and he needs to. CLFS is off to such a ridiculous lead. He's 5-0 and 1, and getting that extra kill yeah. onto Rookie on the back of that play is certainly not helping out NIP. And you know, we there were a lot of questions about IG. It's like, well, okay, where did Lian go? You've tried multiple different junglers. Tianzhen was a bit of a failed experiment here as well. Where's YSKM? You've lost Wink. They could just be about to get, well, what is on paper there very much an upset. INAP have had their struggles, but IG have looked really bits and pieces within the group stage. I think GLFS coming through and showing um, a much stronger game from him will definitely buoy the spirits of this jungler that's again steps into what feels like a poison chalice situation with many other members of this team. It does feel that way, doesn't it? And IG. You know, on the cusp. I don't want to get too excited. There are only 1,000 gold ahead right now. I really, I'm struggling not to get ahead of myself. And the th like, again, I know we've just been talking about it all game long, but the thing that's in their way is individually rookie voting. Goes for the cleanse. Oh, may have overstepped on this one. The smoke screen means voting can't jump around. And ultimately doesn't end in anything. Shanji now an opportunity to get some damage down on this tower, but a TP answering from Zui. And Zui has picked up the Leandris. We've seen this with a cannon into uh, Kasanze Tech. You have yourself the first strike as well, which is just kind of nice to just keep doing some extra damage. Now you're going to force uh, Nidalee out of the jungle. Has Merc Treads, has um, the Hollow Radiance as well. So plenty of magic resist to shrug off some of the burst damage from the mid jungle of NIP. That will be very important for them. Well, all that's happening, he's holding those two into account. Should be safe on the weak side of the map. GLFS will get himself the Herald. And then what that means is that hopefully you can make a big power play with, with uh, the next Kennen ult. Hopefully the Flash will be up for him. The next Galio ult. And maybe you can use that Herald to force this game wide open. Rookie continues to pressure in these side lanes, but Herald will go the way of IG here. Vampire just continuing to deny vision, deny any chance of contestion. GLFS will finish that one off. So, zero towers picked up so far by IG's win. Ha -ha. Wants to change that fact. We'll finally get onto this top tier one and finish that job. And with the Herald in pocket, they can look to try and yeah. open up mid lane as well. Yeah, they really showed you that, Joe. They, 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 they. And they got me. <laughs> Ah, they got you good. Um, yeah, so that's going to be um, a bit of opening up on the map, as we said. And with IG looking for, once again, um, like really big team fights in a different way to the last game, but big team fights where they can kind of like come in from an expected angle. Suian, uh, he might need himself an emergency teleport. There comes the Galio. He's alone right it's now. It's still four two players four. from NIP, and Nani is just going to go into the middle of everyone potentially get locked up. That's a tank Vampire. Galio, though. He's happy to be there. And Vampire now looking for the engage onto the fight line. The hero's entrance is exactly that as he locks up Aki and the Ignite finishes the job. The slicing Maelstrom sets up for more as Botic and Rookie flee for the hills. IG are all over this game three. And they use the Herald just to keep the push in the top lane while there are dead members from NIP. Get the gold of an inner turret. No, they won't break open that mid lane outer turret, which is, I guess, what you normally expect from this, but they'll take the gold in hand. IG have the one bow combo. By God, did they land it. I am loving watching Nani in this series. His entire... Oh, oh the drifting! Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, okay, I don't know. I guess he was just using it as a taxi at the end. I thought he was going to try and go towards mid lane there, but uh, unfortunately, we'll not get the charge, and we'll just go down. Rookie, maybe engaged upon. No, on is oh, being a little over aggressive on this. this. I'm not sure you win this one v one, on as rookie. Trades it very aggressively. On the survive, it cost him a barrier. Yeah, it's a low cooldown. It's been higher than it was in the past. Takes something onto Rookie, gets some honey fruit back as well. I guess he's lucky the fact that there's no um, big objective up in the next minute or two. And he's also lucky that he's got two very beefy members of his mid lane and his support to cank up for him as well. I'm loving the tank build from Nene. I'm loving that he's just gone, look, I am here to protect. I, I, I am here also to going look after the guy. Too. I think he's just going to warm up. And at that point, if he just sits in a side lane, we used to see this from Orn versus Fiora back in the day, back in like season seven, season eight, where, yeah, you get dunked on for one wave. You just back off on the turret and then things don't really care after that point. Rookie on before, so doesn't hit that chain though. Very, very scary. Rookie popping out of Fog of War can very much one-shot the Kaiser. And that's a lot of the damage gone with IG. <laughs> We didn't make see a that play towards this bottom side. Shanji 
will walk away and will keep himself alive. I wasn't sure if that was going to be a full four-man play there coming out. Just try and dive onto him, but it is a Cassante. It's always kind of scary to try and dive a Cassante. Uh, uh, voting is overstayed for this one. Vampire finds his engage. Slow from the solo player. Flash forward from Nani, but it's answered by Votic's own flash. Arm knocked up by the death charge, but the damage isn't quite there. Rookie arrives on the play. Arm can't quite get anything here as Shanji forces the boy. Slicing Maelstrom is only onto the Cassante, though. He's hooked in, and he'll be taken down. No flashes out of safety. It's absolute abject chaos. And IG driving it. Whoa. Triple kill for GLFS. No, sorry. Griffith on the stage. Oh, Griffith puts them to the sword. The burst damage from the Graves is absolutely obnoxious. This player, which has been under so much fire for having a weak start to summer, it seemed like a poison chalice stepping into IG. He has come away 9-0 and 1! What is what did they jump? What did they feed him? What what did they put in his drink between game one, two, and three? This man has had his warhorse in the break. Uh, if he's anything like Yagao, he's had a cigarette <laughs> as well. My goodness, what a performance from the rookie jungler. And Fotic gets called to start it off. He always gets out. And GLFS is just kind of ignored for most of the play. And also, I really think that um, both Vampire and Nani did a great job of just buying up the attention of the Callista. I mean, Nani's reset the fight. is tanky enough to survive through to a second round of cooldowns, buy up a huge taunt through this, which allows the extra roll. So it's nice to come in from Griffith and, of course, from Arn as well. I think, honestly, this is a frontline difference. The burst coming afterwards is kind of decoration on top of the legwork done by the tanks. I mean, that was a, a stylish way to finish the fight as well. The Q onto the tower to get that instant damage. 11 to 6. NIP are 5,000 gold down when they should be favorites. When Rookie is on his signature pick that he's got his own skin for. And yet, Nani's here denying. Nani, he's going again. Carrying. This could be another fight. Vampire finding these fights. Dwo, the target here. And I don't think he'll get out of this one. Although, Fotix Ultimate will save the day for now. And he will get out of this one. Yeah, I think they just kind of forgot that Callista existed. It's a long cooldown, so that's definitely something that they can use to their advantage. We see the difference between uh, engaged support being able to pull out. And it's not so. Now, IG, they managed to get themselves a fog of war onto the Baron. They have huge Baron damage between this very oh, fast race and the Geyser. It's just going to melt. There's no way Ed OP again here in time. Okay, I was wrong. They want the fight after all. Hacky the target here as everyone else just dives onto the back side. And in the meantime, Hunt has gone down. I'm not entirely sure what's just occurred. Oh, Shanji almost dying to the ult on the other side too. I think Kashanji just happened, mate. Just dives into the back line, assassinates the AD carry. See you later, mate. I was taking a look at Zuyan, who was trying to find a 1v1 elsewhere. I need to see a replay of that one right now. Kashanji has just saved the game for NIP. It looked like it was all going the way of IG, but it's turned around. Now GLFS trying to get onto Aki. The Primal Surge is a huge heal onto him. GLFS barely gets away with his own life. Oh, he does, but really, again, set up for by his mid laner, Nani. Yeah, he's down 1.5k gold. I don't think he cares. He just has to stand there and be a CC bot for the people who are fed on his team. Again, I think a lot of what IG have done as a team and as individuals is understand the assignment. They know that their tanks can be really goddamn tanky and open up opportunities for the carries to do some real work. But NIP in the last fight or two have managed to somehow slip through, through the, the front line and get onto the carries. Vampire, yeah, go straight onto Aki. I don't actually think the Nidalee is the most valuable target. I guess you just try and take away the spike, but while that happens, just the front line opens up. Vampire puts himself out of position to defend his AD carry. I think that that's just a little bit of a misplay, miscoordination between frontline and backline. I think the amount of players that are there trying to protect Arn and Shanti yeah. <laughs> still just dives in and gets the kill, dives out. Smooth um, criminal. Yeah, that was uh, that was something else. Shanti, well played, sir. As Vampire now takes a spear, but he's happy to do so. Baron. A lot of pings flying. Like, we're only just past 20 minutes, and both teams, like, spam yeah. pinging Baron, grouping up for the objective. Now you can see that um, IG, they might want... Well, they're teleporting behind. They want to bait again. Shanji has oh, to teleport now. From Nani, Rookie gets away. Can Fotic do the same? Cleanse comes off through, but whoa, suddenly alone on the play. 
Fates call from Fotic, gets him out to safety, and Shanji held off on the TP. So that's a tier yeah. two taken on the top side. Again, NIP, they have the Cholesterol. They can pull the support out of safety. Now IG are well and truly forcing on the Baron. They don't, they do still have all of their ultimates though. Oh god, here we go. Aki is over the wall. Shanji's gonna TP. It's a bit into 50-50. Aki wins those. Shanji in the middle of everyone. The slicing maelstrom, the hero's entrance, all of the circles flying down. But Shanji's still going strong and off dodges away from the Q3. Gets himself out. But in the meantime, Vampire's gone down. It's absolute chaos once again. It's two people down for an IP. They're gonna stop it back. Oh, Jesus, man. Rookie just walking into. The Graves, NIP, they walk away with the steel. They walk away with three Baron buffs as well. That might just open up the ending of the game for them after praising IG so much for understanding how to play around the LeBlanc and play around these team fights. They've been out executed. And now Rookie in a side lane with the Death Gap and that Ludens might just be able to gun for the 1-3-1. Honestly, for anyone. Oh no, Rookie's here, plus two. Wait a second, Rookie here on the wrong side of the map, but he forced the flash now. The Q comes out. Surely this is a kill for GLFS. Surely the collateral damage finishes the job, but it's on cooldown. He can't quite close the gap. Needs to get that e flash from Zwien. Rookie oh, down. No. He's died to a blast cone. I think he just took that, you know, that energy drinking power blast cone straight through to the gray screen. What an awful mistake from the old mid laner of IG. The mid laner which made this team famous. Maybe just granting them another win if we're going to be harsh about that one. Really, really awkward timing. I just don't think he thought he was going to find a full group of IG that he goes down just as they, just they claimed that Baron. I mean, that is catastrophic. That is about as bad timing as you could possibly get for Rookie. Mm -hmm. He's had such a good game, but it just won't matter now. That's a tier two in the bot side. It's sole point for IG. Shanji Shaw. We can answer with a tier one in the top side, but it's just not an even trade at all. No, it's not. IG, can they force another fight though with uh, an IP kind of being back down in positioning on the map? Shanji's going to go back. He doesn't have a teleport. He'll buy up presumably a Jack Show when he completes this uh, next back. And then we'll see what's going to happen in the bot side of this jungle. IG, one of the things which is really keeping them in this game, again, is just this jungle matchup. Aki on the Nidley, on the AP junglers, just hasn't had impact. Whereas Griffith on the other side is just putting a bullet between the eyes of NIP every time they walk up to him. Zwin trying to chase down Shanji. Not sure that's a particularly killable target anymore. Shanji is <laughs> becoming very hard uh, to deal oh, with. What happens Rookie, here? I think it's just a misclick, right? I don't know about that. He walks back. No, he spots one person. He's trying to get one. He's trying to get the assassination. And I think, I think if it's just the one person, that could be a miracle pick. But he sees three people there. Less so, Joe. Less yeah. so. Tough one. Tough one for Rookie. Tries to find the angle. The angle is absolutely not there because the whole gang was on board for the play for IG. And now the Baron power play ends in uh, negative 400 gold. Not ideal. And, you know, IG were like almost 5k up. up. Then the Baron happened and then they were like only 1k up. Now they're back to 3k up. This is a... Uh, very much so, you're a saying the strategy game. is to not take Baron. Yeah, yeah, let him have it. It's an anti gold Baron in this series, apparently. Um, and the thing is, even with you know the gold um, in terms of the overall team, the gold is in the right places for IG and Sonya. They don't care about gold on the Galio. All he has to do is buy space. Vampire doing the same thing. They have the Warmogs as well. They can take poke, they can heal themselves back up. They're very happy to tank up and then reset a fight. Two minutes until any neutrals come up, and we could have a bit of a lull in the action as such. Rookie always looking, but to be honest, against this Leona, against this Galio, it's really hard yeah. to get any significant damage coming on through. You can see there, negative three, four, eight on the Baron power play. Nani is so tanky at this point. Rookie can't even continue yeah. poking like he was. And, and like, this is... They've fed so much gold over to um, their other members and given side lane farm to Tsuyan and to Arn. Nenny's not gotten the gold for the minions. He is up at XP, by the way, uh, and that's going to be really important. Galio, each of his abilities has really high base damage, and when you max each of them out, it's kind of like the Silas situation where every one of the abilities maxed out offers you some very different points in power. Sometimes champions don't actually care for one of their abilities to be maxed in certain builds, but 
Galio getting towards the point with huge value across the board. Very happy to just be a proper beef ball fighting with just their base damages. Any is a problem. Uh, Hero's Entrance definitely uh, a key name for an ability yes. in this one. As it does feel like Nani can be that hero for IG in so many of these plays. Both Arn, GLFS, and Zwin can individually carry these fights. And it's down to Vampire yeah. and to Nani to set them up. Zwin's going to have Flash before the next fight as well. There's no exhaust on the other side from NIP. Important to note that when Cannons and Meta, you expect them to be exhausts. Hanging around the place, NIP, they chose to go towards the Ignite, play towards the TV2 early game. Even that didn't necessarily work out for them. It feels like Suyam, even though he's had some uh, less than stellar moments in this game at points, with his uh, three items, Death Cap, Leandris, and Void Staff. Doesn't matter if he's had a weaker earlier game. He flashed onto the right targets and managed to kill off Rookie, Fotik, Aki as well, another prime target. Maybe that could just swing things in IG's final, final advantage. Yeah. And doesn't it feel somehow poetic that Rookie is playing his IG uh -huh. skin on the LeBlanc and it could be IG that find the upset here and shut him down. Also, Arn playing the other IG skin yeah. <laughs> in uh, this. He's got Jackie Love's Kaisa skin locked and loaded. Perhaps hey. this could be the upset in favor of IG. TP coming through from Rookie. They want to contest here. They just spotted out the Baron, so they know it's not happening right now. Amy trying to move in, takes a bit of damage. He's in the meantime, Vampire goes quite deep for this one. But Chuo is almost one shot, pulled out to save D. The Maelstrom across everyone as on oh! turns into the back side and eviscerates NIP. Zwian survives, not a single casualty for IG as they look to be the giant slayers once more. Shanji finds one and that might just be enough to keep NIP in the game. Oh, Rookie is looking for more here, but he might have overstepped. As on just flashes onto the enemy mid laner, onto a legend of the league, and wants to find more. Rookie keeps diving in, keeps trying to find his damage. They Teleport. don't want to give up Drake here. Nani can't flank Shanji, but can he realistically find anything? The CCJ locks down Rookie, and Arn finishes the kill. Shanji wants to get the AD carry, and will. Vampire and Nani, they don't have damage to deal with Xante, and Aki in the meantime, Almost one shot, Swian. The burn isn't enough. Swian somehow alive. Welcome to the LPL. Enjoy your stay, everyone. When you've got teams like this, you know they are going to be fighting to the death. This should have been the victory lap for IG. This should have been them crowning this first series win at the group stage for themselves. But it's not quite as easy as that. Shanji, rookie on two of their iconic picks, just about clutching it to the point where they can hang on for another minute or two. Is it gonna get them the dragon? No, that will still be Sol, very likely going for IG. I don't think that uh, NIP can rush the Baron on the other side either. They're just going towards the top side to put down a ward or two for when the Nidalee comes back up to play. IG, with how close these fights are getting, I'm gonna call it now. I think actually Kentek Sol gets very, very valuable when everyone ends up on the fight with about 10% HP. It certainly does, and I have to say, on in these last couple of fights has really started to show his strength here. Fotik on the Callista. I mean, you're such a short range carry against so much CC. It's really difficult to have an impact, not to mention Swain very much into one shot territory as IG start the Baron once again. Shanji happy to be the one to face check, but the Baron's already gone down. It's already fallen. IG get the objective. Can they get the fight? Here is a just across the whole team. Finds the knock up zone. Rookie is gone. NIP nowhere to run. Chuo tries to buy space, but there's no space left. Triple kill comes through for GLFS as Aki desperately tries to hold on, but there's nothing to hold on to. IG with 30 seconds should end the game. That should be it. I'm going to agree with you on that one. Baron, good fight for them. Only lose the one member. Maybe Aki can get one last assassination, but you can't do that through the Galio. This should be the game. IG with another upset from the LPL this week. This rookie squad of IG bringing in Zwian, bringing in GLFS. Vampire coming over from EDG. They said it couldn't be done, but IG didn't care. NIP rocked 
But Invictus Gaming, the team which looked like it was a surefire shot to the bottom of this group. Group D, the team with five teams, it's a larger pool of them. They face more opponents, and it feels like it could be even more of a fracture set. The other ones, IG, if they put their name into a hat like this, this opens up the table for teams like Weibo to get a step further forwards when it looked like they might have been going through in even the bottom two at that point. Ultra Prime also raising their heads up at this point and seeing if there is an opportunity. The more even the group is, the more of a mess the second round Robin's going to be. What looked like a, a cut and dry group has now become abject chaos. <laughs> Literally any of these three teams can make it out at this point. If NIP can lose to IG, then anything can happen in this group. And you can see the elation on the faces of these IG players, and rightly so. What a series they have played today. And what a draft as well coming into this third game. I love the way IG have approached this series and said, look, if we shut down Rookie, what else do NIP have?